Okay, uh, today we're doing a tutorial in Blender, uh, Blender 2.61 as you can see here, and we're going to be working with Python in the game engine. And today we're going to be looking at kind of doing a drag and drop, we're going to be moving an object, a 3D object, in this case this cube, uh, with our mouse cursor. Now I could not find a tutorial on this online, so it's a good thing I'm making it, but I kind of came up with my own way of doing it. Um, there may be a better, more accurate way out there. I kind of had to play with the numbers a whole lot before I got it working uh, correctly, or at least close to correctly. Um, so if you know a better way, be sure to let me know. Um, but here we go, we're going to start off. First thing we need to do, I'm going to go to our front view here and move our camera to that front view. Whoops. And as you can see, first off, if I start up the game engine now by hitting P while hovering over the 3D view, our cube is black. That is due to our positioning of our lighting. Let's grab that, move that over here, go back to our camera view, and press P. You can see our object now, our cube object, is lit up. Now, next thing we need to do is you can see our cursor is invisible. We need to make our cursor visible so we know what we're clicking on or where we're clicking. So let's change this to a text editor here. We'll say new text, format it all, and we'll call this script show mouse.py. And if you've been watching this series, you know that just doing two lines, we're going to import a module of import rasterizer. And then we're going to use that module rasterizer dot show mouse it is case sensitive so make sure you capitalize where I capitalize and lowercase where I capitalize where I lowercase and and we're gonna set that value to true a value of false would make the cursor invisible now we have to link that script to an object let me turn that side view off there and we're gonna split the window and change this to our logic editor and I'm just going to connect that script to our camera since the camera's not doing anything. We're going to say always and link it to a script called showmouse.py. Um, and that should do it. There we go. We can still see our cursor. Also, normally I tell you more of the keys that I'm pressing, but people have been complaining that I haven't been using the screencast, as you can see in the bottom of the screen here. Um, so I figure if I have that on, I don't have to say all that. I Just because that's what people seem to want. So uh, if you don't know what buttons I'm clicking, I'm probably not saying it anymore. Just look at that right there. So next, we're going to add in uh, another script here. And we'll call this one moveobj py for move object. That one will be linking to our cube here using a sensor of mouse and by default that's a left click so that shall work, should work and we'll say Python script connect that there. Okay so now we will start writing out that script and we're going to have to start off by importing the Blender Game Engine module. Next, we're going to say uh, we're going to have to look at our controller object. So we're going to say cont equals Blender Game Engine logic. So we're using the Blender Game Engine module that we imported, looking at its logic, and we're going to get the current the mouse there, so you can see controller. So we got the controller, now let's look at the owner, the object that uh, is the owner of that controller, in this case our cube. So we'll say owner equals our controller's owner. Next, we're going to look, we're going to say our mouse equals our controller's sensor, sensors, with a S at the end there. And we're going to look for one called mouse. Now, when we're calculating the mouse location, we can't just say the mouse location equals this, because the mouse gives a coordinate of, like, depending on the size of your screen, you know, uh, you know, 0 through, you know, 12,000 or whatever your screen resolution is. And 
stuff like that. So we need to do some math to figure out where the cursor is. And the first thing we need to do is figure out the width of our window because we don't know whether the person, you know, if I resize this window um, or watching it full screen or in a window, uh, we need to get the windows width and height for left and right. So we'll start off with the width because we're going to start off working with left and right, our x axes first. So we're going to say the width, oh, got to hover my mouse over here, width equals the Blender Game Engine render get window width. Now we need to center that, so we're going to say we're going to look at the width and now set it to whatever the width currently equals and divide it by 2. Next we're going to get the mouse position. So we're going to say POS equals mouse, which is the object we created up here. And we're going to say dot position. Parenthes oh, no parentheses there. Next we're going to move it on the x-axis left and right. So we're going to say POS x equals what the width is minus POS zero. Now the reason we put zero there is because when you get the location of the cursor uh, you're working on x and y axes. So we're going to be looking at either x or y which is when you're working in 2D y is up and down. When you're working in 3D uh, Z is up and down. But in this case we want X left and right which will be the zero in that case. Hope that makes sense. Next we're going to say PO, POS X we're taking what that currently equals, the width minus the position of the mouse and this is kind of where I did a lot of tweaking. We're going to say the POS X times 0 0.003 so 0 0.03. So that's taking a big number. Like I said, your screen could be, you know, 12,000 pixels wide. And so your location at the far end would be 12,000. We divide that in half and then subtracted the position of the mouse from that. And then now we need to take that big number and shrink it down. And if you multiply by a decimal, it's kind of like dividing. I guess you probably could have divided, but it just makes more sense to do it this way. Um, but for some reason when I did that, um, and I haven't really looked at the math, I got a flipped number, a negative number for positive and positive number for negative. And of course, we can just say multiply by negative 1, and that will flip it back. So real quick here, let's just now at this point say print parentheses, and inside the parentheses, POS, X, and since we started playing Blender Game Engine inside a terminal, like you should when you're working with a game like this, we're going to press P while hovering over here. And if I drag this over here, I clicked, and you see when I clicked, we have an error, and it says module has no attribute uh, window, get window here. And I can tell you right now what I did. So you see, error messages help. It says right here, the module object has no attribute get window. And it doesn't. So looking at my script, escape out of the game here, I put a period here. There's no period there. Now let's try it again. And I click. And every time I click, I'm getting a number in the terminal here. Now you can see I got 3, I got 7, depending on where I was clicking, negative numbers, um, depending on whether I'm halfway, you know, to the, from the screen to the left or to the right, we get a positive number. Uh, if I didn't multiply by the 0 .03, this would be 300 something. And the cube right now is about one Blender unit in width, so it would have flown off the screen. We wouldn't have seen it once we clicked. So... That's working good so far. Let's hit escape here. We also want to be able to pulse mode this so it doesn't just jump to where the mouse is, but it follows the mouse while moving. Actually, I'll unclick that so you can see what I'm talking about in a minute here. So now that we got that value, now we can set the object's value on the x-axis to equal that. So we're going to say our owner, in this case our, log our object, our, our cube that we created up here on line 4, we're going to say that it's local 
position on the x axis equals POS X and now start the game up nothing happens when I left click each time I click it jumps to where my cursor is so that's why we need to trigger pulse mode now I press P I click and it follows my cursor now you'll notice that it's not following the cursor perfect and that's because I kinda made up these numbers down here let's try changing this 0 0.03 to 0 0.02 and see what happens that's a little bit better now I haven't played with this too much so I don't know if if I'm on a completely different size screen if that's gonna make a difference in fact let's give that a try right now let's shrink this Oops. shrink this this way and see what happens that still seems good so if you have an issue where it's not lining up close change that number once again I just kinda of made this up not really knowing what I'm doing so now we want to get the the uh, y-axis uh, or z-axis actually in the 3d view and that's what we'll continue in the next tutorial so um, keep on watching, but I'm sure you could probably guess what's going to happen in the next tutorial. And I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I hope that you have a great day.